We've all seen how drones, especially FPV drones, have become a huge problem for tanks and other armored vehicles. So much so that it's led to serious discussions about if tanks have become obsolete. But there is one technology that Russia is really the original pioneer of, and it seems like it might be able to protect against those drones. And that is APS, or Active Protection Systems, and specifically what is called Hardkill APS. And Russia, for years now, has been proudly showing off its APS systems, like Arena and the next generation Afghanit. However, they are virtually nowhere to be found on the battlefield in Ukraine. The only APS system I could find was on one destroyed Russian T-80 UM-2, and that was just a few weeks into the war in March 2022. Since then, nothing. So, where are they? We've seen them use them all the way back to the 80s in Afghanistan. And also, how effective would they be against drones? But first, real quick, our sponsor, Field of Greens. Field of Greens is a superfood powder providing a range of nutritions from 100% real USDA organic fruits and veggies, supporting healthy digestion, boosting your immune system, and much more. There's a million companies promising similar things, but most, the actual content of their veggies is not high due to the way they produce them cheap. Field of Greens even goes a step beyond that to add vital ingredients like ginger. It costs them more to do so, but it makes a huge difference. Now, I normally just mix it with water, but as I mentioned last time, I found that apple juice goes really well with it. But I've been taking it, so is my wife. And this is actually the only one I have left since I first got it two months ago. Strawberry lemonade, which actually sounds pretty good. I'm not sure why I haven't gotten into it yet. But since trying it, I've noticed getting better sleep and my stomach feeling better. But I'm sure you'll love Field of Greens. But if you don't, you could return it for a full refund. Get started with 15% off and free shipping on your first order. Go to fieldofgreens.com and use promo code COVERT. That's promo code COVERT at fieldofgreens.com. When it comes to protecting a tank, there's no silver bullet. An APS system will never defend 100% of the time against every type of threat. It's just one more additional layer of protection, among many, to increase the survivability of a tank. And they all come with trade-offs as well. Putting additional armor on makes a tank heavier and less mobile. The so-called cope cages can limit visibility for the crew, and so on. So, to get the best understanding of protection against drones in regards to APS, we need a quick understanding of tank armor first. And a huge thanks to Crumbs here who helped with a lot of the research. And also, to be fair, for the sake of time, this is all a very, very simplistic explanation of how these different types of armor work. It gets a lot more complicated. A lot. First, and most obvious, type of armor is just having as thick as possible metal hull. The thicker the better. Again, thicker means heavier though, hurting speed and mobility. One easy way of fixing that is sloped armor. It's pretty simple. At a 60 degree angle, the armor becomes twice as thick. And you can see this slanted shape on outer hulls and even on some turrets on virtually all types of modern battle tanks. It's an easy way to greatly increase your armor protection without increasing weight. However, a huge change occurred with the invention of shaped charge warheads. Instead of just smashing into the armor, or using a simple explosive warhead, these focus the energy in a particular direction. These consist of cones, roughly in the shape of a V, with the opening facing the target. The detonation wave behind it first hits that closest part, which will invert the V into a jet piercing straight through the armor. These warheads became widely used as World War II went on, and had a massive effect on the war. And they're still used widely today. In fact, it's the type of warhead that most of these FPV drones have on them. So, armor had to adapt. These warheads, and other more complicated anti-tank weapons, led to the development of things like spaced armor, different composite armor made of various layers and materials beyond just metal, as well as reactive armor. All of which protects the tank in some pretty interesting ways, beyond just simply putting as much metal between the crew and the incoming projectile as possible. And each offers better protection against different types of weapons. It's not a one-size-fits-all. Spaced armor, for example, tends to be better against kinetic projectiles like APFSDS. It involves two different steel plates separated. Between them might be empty space or some other filler or armor component. When an APFSDS round impacts the first outer plate, it'll begin to erode away as it penetrates it. Once the tip emerges from the first plate, it will experience different pressure or force waves than the rest of the rod, and that's due to it slowing down or speeding up due to the different materials it's encountering. As it continues to pass through these different layers, it can eventually experience structural integrity failures to destroy the weapon. Some armor may consist of multiple layers of armor, spacing or filler, more armor, more spacing, and so on. Each progressive layer it passes through will deform the rod even more and can even change its trajectory. 
Another method of increasing armor protection levels without substantially increasing the weight was the development of reactive armor. Now there's many different types of reactive armor, so we'll just cover the most common type, the explosive reactive armor, or ERA. These tend to take the shape of the large bricks that you commonly see spread across Russian tanks. Where the spaced armor tends to work better against kinetic projectiles, ERA tends to work better against those shape charges mentioned earlier. And Russia is one of the main users of ERA. They put it all over their tanks, and is a pretty defining feature of them. But these, very basically, are typically two plates with explosives in between. The idea is that when the shape charge warhead, called heat here for high explosive anti-tank, hits it, the ERA detonates and breaks up the incoming jet. And interestingly, there's even ERA that the explosives themselves are full of shape charges. These blast a line of jet, since it's not spherical, into the incoming projectile and attempt to further break up things like APF SDS rounds. Then finally, closing out the video, and most importantly answering the question of the video, active protection systems. It's a way to protect your tank without actually adding any armor at all. There's two main kinds, hard kill and soft kill. Soft kill basically just tries to make an incoming weapon lose track and miss. These are things like smoke screens or trying to jam its sensor. Hard kill is actually destroying the incoming weapon before it can hit you. Russia's prime example of soft kill is Shatora. It's these weird looking eyes that we see, mostly on certain older T90s. Unfortunately, the way it worked isn't really effective anymore against newer anti-tank weapons like Javelin. That's because these don't use the semi-active command line of sight. So, Russia got rid of it on the newer T90M. Smoke screens are also useful, however, they do take time to fully disperse. The time will vary, but roughly around 20 seconds. However, when it comes to concealed ATGM teams firing Javelin or an FPV drone, there really isn't enough time for it to be effective. Plus, if the tank is moving, it's going to eventually emerge and pass the smoke anyway. So, that leaves hard kill. The exact way these work is often highly classified, and also vary by country and system. But they typically have a sensor, normally radar, that will detect an incoming threat. When it does, it will launch a projectile that then detonates and hopefully destroying the target. They work great in theory, and they have proven themselves valuable in combat. However, there are some serious issues when it comes to intercepting drones. One is their speed. Hard kill APS, like Russia's Arena, has radars that are set only to detect and intercept targets moving at certain speeds. It ignores slower moving objects, so it's not randomly firing at birds or other false targets like debris that's kicked up, small arms fire, and so on. RPGs and ATGMs typically fly much faster, so it's an easy way for an APS system to distinguish between them. Arena's speed minimum is reportedly 250 km per hour, or about 150 miles per hour. Drones, however, fly much slower. There's also the question of how effective Arena is against top attacks, and if its sensors can even see that high. So, without major changes made to the software, which then risks it firing at false targets and endangering those around it, it's not going to be very effective against drones. Also, active protection systems would almost certainly be hampered by the so-called coke cages that we see on Russian vehicles. They would most likely block the sensors and projectile launchers of hard kill APS, making it unusable. And people often laugh at these cages and make memes of them. However, we've seen them appear all over the world, like in Israel. We've even seen some Ukrainian vehicles using them. We do see many vehicles that are equipped with them still being destroyed, but that's not a great indicator of how effective they are. The attacker really isn't going to be posting videos of unsuccessful attacks. We typically only see the successful ones. But even if the cages are able to stop every other drone, that's doubling the survivability of the tank, which is pretty good. But all that to say, when it comes to what's more efficient and effective, these cope cages are likely better in certain cases. Also, another big factor is cost. Where the latest hard kill APS can and often do cost many hundreds of thousands of dollars to well over a million, cope cages can cost just a few hundred dollars. So, in the end, it's all these aspects of tank protection that come into play. Thicker armor, ERA helping protect against the shape charge warheads like most of these drones carry, and cope cages, or possible future modified APS to stop the drone before it actually hits the tank. But for now, it doesn't seem like APS is a solution to the drone problem. These FPV drones are still a pretty new type of weapon, so it's going to take some time to figure out the best countermeasures. And that will likely be a combination of different types of armor, jamming, and possibly more.